I'm not sure of the total history of the men's shed, um, but I believe it was started in the UK and then came out here. Uh, no? No, they started in Australia. One was uh, an independent group, one was affiliated with some brand of church and then that's changed, it's all in the Australian Men's Shed Association now. So the Men's Shed Association gives advice on setting up a shed and uh, helps with various aspects of that and for other things like insurance coverage for members and public liability etc, that's arranged for the Australian Men's Shed Association. And the purpose of, we have a written purpose or mission or whatever you want to call it and it's the, uh, the advancement of the health and well-being of its members, uh, promotes men's health programs because once a month we have a committee meeting and after the committee meeting there's usually a lecturer or a speaker and they are a whole range of things but they're usually towards the men's health point of view. But there are other interesting uh, talks. Uh, we've had stuff from uh, people uh, in relation to uh, hearing aids and they gave all the guys who came a hearing test. Um, they were, the, some of the guys were a little bit sus, uh, suspicious of it because we just say, well, I'm bound to be, uh, uh, have bad hearing just so they, I can go and buy one of their machines. But apparently it, um, it, it went quite well. I wasn't out there, I couldn't hear them anyway. <laughs> uh, and it's the identify and nurture innovative ideas and activities for men. Somebody comes up with an idea to do something, that's it, well, we're gonna make a space shuttle. Well, we've got enough mental power here between all, I think uh, present membership here in this club is about 144. And there's a whole range of uh, professional people and tradespeople, and we're all, we all work together. So that's it, and then uh, encourage men with widely varying skills. Well, that's obvious because there's a whole range of, of, of stuff out here. I mean, out there at the moment in the workshop, uh, there are two lawyers, but they're quite nice anyway. Um, and then there is a, um, uh, a merchant's S uh, sailor, officer. Um, just outside is uh, Dennis, who is the who was a retired head of the toxicology department for the Department of Agriculture. So he's a, a world-renowned uh, toxicologist in plant and animal behaviours. Yeah. When I retired, uh, as you know, I, I started to study, but I needed something uh, physical to do. So uh, that's why I came down here and I got involved initially with the computers, but then I turned over to, uh, to woodworking because I like, I like building things. And um, it's, it's, it's great fun and we do things for the community. And also from the woodworking group, we also go to the schools during the vacation period because some of the schools have vacation care so that the children uh, go back to school, but not to do learning, but just to be looked after while the parents are in work. And so we, we go along there and we do woodworking with the kids. All right, well this is the workshop. Um, all the equipment you see here has either been built by us or it's been donated to us. For example, the, uh, the two workbenches which we'll come to in a minute, uh, were basically our first episode into woodworking, so they, they seem to be worked quite well. A lot of the, as I said, most of the equipment has been donated, and we have repaired them, and again with our tame electrician, he's able to test them out and uh, make sure they're safe for us. So if you come down this way, this area is the, the metal working section. We have a, a metal, metal working lathe, we have welding, uh, a welding set and other bits and pieces. But down the far end, you'll see all the bicycles. And on a Monday, there is the bicycle repair group. They are donated, they are donated bicycles of, of different standards of repair. They cannibalize them and put them together. The guy in charge used to have his own bicycle shop 
so he knows what he's talking about and he, he and his crew rectify the bikes and we, are, we give them to, uh, to charity. Here is um, a project we're in the, in the process of doing which are, we call them B, B motels. So the, the uh, natural bees, the, uh, sorry, say the uh, indigenous bees, they're very small, so they don't really make honey, but they can go in there and sort of and, um, live in there. So they're the uh, indigenous bees. So we, we have a, a contract with a local shop, which we build them and we sell them to them, and then they sell, sell off to the general public as a, as a retailer. Uh, the money we get from them, we are slowly going to renew all our equipment because as I said earlier, most of it, or nearly all of it's been donated, so it's second, third, fourth hand. Some of them are in pretty lousy condition. So we'd like to, to increase our capacity to make bigger and better things to get more money to buy more machines. A lot of trees have, uh, Nat uh, so the indigenous trees have been taken over by para parasitic vine, which I think is, it was imported uh, accidentally, of course. And the only way to get rid of it was to cut the tree and the vine down and, and burn it all. Well, somebody I think we believe from the university has developed another vine which invades the first vine, but doesn't invade the tree. So what we're doing was to build these peculiar contraptions. These are fixed to the tree or to the vine and they put soil in here and then they plant the number two vine and that slowly grows and it comes out the sides. You can see the holes and also at the back which is all act as a drain hole and that takes over the first vine and kills it but it doesn't affect the tree. Obviously once the, the first vine dies there's no more nutrient for the second vine so that dies as well so it falls off and these have been uh, designed and built so they'll last out in the, uh, uh, the weather for around between five, five to seven years we reckon which is enough time to kill the vines. So we, we, we tried this, uh, we made a, about three or four prototypes for the, uh, for the council. Um, they appear to be working very well. They've asked us to build another 50 of them. And the issue is that some of the other councils are now ringing up and finding out, oh, can we have some? So, <laughs> so we're turning it into quite a little sort of, I wouldn't say money spinner, because we don't get a lot. Um, but we are kindly donated the pallet, wooden pallets for which it's made from and um, so it's something for the environment and so we, we, we are recycling old pallets so which, is, uh, which is part of our ethos to help the environment. We have a lot of camaraderie here, we have, we have some laughs, we have some, some jokes, uh, we very rarely have any tears. <laughs> But um, if any of the politicians throughout the world want to come down, we can sort them out. We can sort the world out. <laughs> so um, if this is going out into the, the States, I highly recommend it because it's, it's good fun. It's good fun.